Hey, I'm Phil McCaffrey, and this is 8.30 Prep, and this is my cell phone where I'm telling David to go onto YouTube. All right, so he's not on yet. He thinks we're not, we're not streaming. I am not streaming you. Hey, I'm Phil McCaffrey. And there he is. Whoops. Turn my volume down would be good. All right. This is the last uh, uh, episode of Grammar King Week. We have um, Ben Esser on. All right. Well, Ben, there's a competition. And Peyton Jones. Hello, Ben. All right. We got some comments. So uh, I am not streaming you. <laughs> That's telling David. David, we all week long, if you've watched, I've streamed him via... Um, Zoom. So what we're going to do. So this is this is our normal 830 prep with me watching it. And I have to tell there he is. Sup, y'all. There's David. That is that is that you, David? Duh, I'm here. OK, so 830 prep. These are questions that I picked off of a couple of tests. The, these are answers on grammar that are always wrong. And if you study grammar with three hour prep, the one thing that you get is some really, really cool solutions and some practice tests. So this is a, a shot here of our website. So oh, this is a screenshot of our website. If you look on our website, right up here, there's a click that says student resources. And what I really wanted to say is free damn tests. Uh, but it's also free damn tests for anybody who wants to use it. So uh, you click on that link, and it comes right here to this portion of the free tests, these are official ACT practice tests, and they put them out every three years. So 2018 was the last one. Next summer, they'll put out another free test. So if you want to go on there, um, I'm here for the money, says Jack. 20, all right, the $20 Venmo. Jack, you get, a, you get a Starbucks gift card because Starbucks is about to reopen in Swickley. So... All right, so these are the free tests. But the one thing I wanted to point out was notice David and I have written a solutions manual. If you click on this, it gives an answer to every single question on all of the tests. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. Six official ACT practice tests that we have written solutions to. There's 75 questions on it. So that's a that's a really beautiful seven so six times five is 30 and 42 so that's 450 grammar explanations with tips and tricks that's way more than any human being needs to study to really master this I would say if you did this four times and you studied seriously you would you would get there the other thing is right now on Amazon Erica Meltzer has here's the Erica Meltzer book that I use it's the third edition if you go on to uh, Amazon you'll see she's updated it it's the fourth edition it's now 25 bucks Amazon floats the price up and down so if this was if there was a lot of tests going on they'd charge an extra five bucks for it but Erica Meltzer um, is a uh, an accidental publisher she just started writing test questions as a tutor when somebody asked her to put together some material for a class and she started studying them and the one thing that she did was the same thing that David and I do which is go to Barnes and Noble uh, and we look at all of the test prep books and for years and years we've looked at the books and we have piles of them and I've gotten rid of most of my test prep books and that is they cover things that aren't tested so Erica has cut it down there are 14 rules of grammar that she covers in this book and then about five or six rules of rhetorical structure, grammatical structure, writing structure. We also are going to come out with some of our own books. I'll be working on a math formula sheet that will be coming up. And here's Jay Hadfield's Little Book of Commas. This is on Amazon. It is a really, really great uh, book. If you work with me, just email me. I'll send you the PDF of it for free so you don't have to waste a whole $9 on Amazon. All right, I'm going to go over things that are always wrong. And the first one, David has talked about it, is separating two independent clauses. 
I love it when a semicolon shows up in an answer choice because it is the easiest uh, answer to eliminate. It is almost always wrong. And I read through five tests, and I believe in five tests that I read through, it was right on two of them on one question. So a semicolon is almost always wrong, and it's particularly wrong when it separates uh, two independent clauses exactly like a period. But when there are the exact same words, instrumental, semicolon, the bands, instrumental, period, the bands, A and C are always wrong. If a period and a semicolon appear, and they have the same words, and I'll show you also the comma and the fanboys, the comma and the coordinating conjunction. This is not a comma fanboys, it's just a comma. So the bands, whatever comes out after this one, is not a complete sentence. The, the, the answer choice is this is a phrase or a clause that fits to whatever we're talking about beforehand, or there's an introductory prepositional phrase. Here is my favorite all-time grammar question answer without even reading the passage. You can look at it and see close period even, close semicolon even, close comma fanboys even. Same exact words, close and even, semicolon, comma, fanboy, period. Those three are all wrong. The answer is no change. You can do this question in five seconds. There's 75 questions in 45 minutes, so you don't get uh, a minute a question. You should be able to do most of these questions in about 10 or 15 seconds. And students who work with us, when they get around their fifth or sixth test, they start saying, I had 15 minutes left over. So they're doing 75 questions in about 30 minutes, which means they're doing about uh, three a minute. It should take you about 15 seconds to recognize it. All right, here's another one that is always wrong, and it's a great one, and Erica has an entire chapter on it that a lot of students don't know, and that is colons and dashes. The dash here is an M dash. It didn't come out. It came out as an N dash. I'll have to work on my uh, Microsoft. I retyped this up so that I wasn't technically stealing too much stuff off of the ACT. But when there's a dash and a colon, I like fairies, <laughs> except they dress up as commas. <laughs> oh, David. Uh, when there's a dash and a colon, they are both the same thing on the ACT. The ACT tests function. It doesn't test style, really. So there is a stylistic difference between a dash and a semicolon, but you have to be a super English nerd to know where there, that is. Notice that the wrong answer choice, as I often point out, is... Sun, and even Microsoft gave me the two-line blue grammar, the, the double grammar blue line of death that it's always wrong. All right, the right answer here is a comma. Commas are almost always the right answer. It's a question of where to put it, so that's why you need the little book of commas and to watch David's comma section. And then practice the commas. Practice it. This is the one area that is based on rules that is words and reading that is based on rules that you can practice and get correct. All right, another one. The other type of dash is the pair of dashes right here. These are called end dashes, and honestly, they're a little too long to be an end dash. Um, <laughs> wait till the game, the game will be on soon. All right. Uh, which of the following alternatives to the underlined portion would not be acceptable? A pair of commas, a pair of end dashes, and a pair of parentheses all function as the same thing. Remember, we're testing function and not style. There's a reason to use parentheses, but once again, even David isn't a big enough nerd to tell you why parentheses are more important than common commas are are you are, are you that are you that big of a nerd let me pull up, pull up my comments and see my comments on here um oh i got my comments on here too david are you that big of a nerd that you could tell us the difference no i really don't want to know but 
if it comes up, commas, dashes, and parentheses all function exactly the same way. And there is never a time on the ACT where a comma and a parentheses is the correct answer. This is a not answer, so the comma parentheses is the correct answer because it is wrong. David, watch me. Hold, hold my beer. All right. Okay. Now I'm going to go over ing words. I-N-G. These are verbs that end in I-N-G, all right? If there is a solo I-N-G word, man, it is almost always wrong. This name of this section of things that Phil says are always wrong, it should be almost always wrong. This answer choice here, performing, is almost always wrong. When you have uh, a sentence and it ends with a noun, then there's a comma phrase, the phrase almost always describes the noun before it. So you could say music performing. That just doesn't sound right. So music performed. What was performed? The music was performed. The music wasn't performing. So performing here is a gerund. It is the noun form of a verb doing the action. Uh, that's pretty good. Man, these are the most comments we've ever had. I should offer 20 bucks up uh, more often. So how many how many view viewers we got? It's just 18. 18, not bad. Okay, lots of comments. All right, I put these in here and I wanted to show the uh, blue lines. They used to be squiggly lines. Now they're, Microsoft has them as double underlines. Say an ING word like I wearing jeans. There's a... Uh, a famous ACT passage about blue jeans being allowed in school. Uh, I walking down the street. This doesn't fit. These You don't use this word. Uh, you don't use an ING word as a verb. Students say it's a verb. No, it is not a verb. It is an adjective describing some type of noun or it's a noun and it typically fits into a noun phrase as we were about to see. Now it's not always wrong. It's not always wrong. Um, and I'll show you a case where it is correct. So here is the thing is I want you to do is listen to your inner, ve in, inner ear. The sentence that's being questioned here is a person's right to wear. So the underlying portion is here is to wear. A person's right to wear jeans. Notice that there is three gerunds. A person's right wearing jeans makes no sense. A person's right for wearing jeans is in a complete sentence. A person's right of wearing jeans. Those are prepositional phrases. They're not nouns. To wear, it, or they are not verbs. To wear is a verb. So say it to yourself and quiet your mind down and listen to yourself in your inner ear. Speak English and you will not be saying, I wearing jeans. All right, here's the famous one where they hike up Mount Fuji, a fool, uh, a wise man hikes up Mount Fuji once, a fool does it a second time. And that is, we notice that the roof piled high on rocks. This has, this was the underlying portion, piled high on rocks. So there's a prepositional phrase. So there's something on the rocks, okay? So there's something doing, so there's something a preposition, the, the rocks are positioned somewhere. So remember prepositions are position. So what is the position of the rocks? They're walking up the mountain and there's little stations and the stations have rocks piled on the roof. So the on would go on the roof. So it's piled high with rocks. Piled high with rocks. The roof is piled with rocks. The roof is not piling rocks. The roof is not in the action of piling. It just doesn't make any sense. I love questions like this because you can almost always just scratch the gerunds out, put the preposition in the right place. They love a question like this. There's the uh, rabbit hutch in the field. We sat on top of the rabbit hutch. Did I wear that? Here's the wearing one. Um, Here's another act, uh, another uh, one that you can see is almost always wrong. 
and I'm really hate to be geeky on it and I did have to use Google and do some grammar searches so it was good for me this was a good lesson for me to learn and that is the present perfect which is having to have something to have having having worn I have never seen the present perfect having be a correct answer I have never seen it so I need to go through the 20 or so tests that we use over and over again and read through all of the answer choices to pick it pick it out but wearing jeans is not a violation of a person's right that is actually correct because the gerund is used as a noun wearing pants is not a violation of a person's rights the wearing is the subject of the sentence is is the verb wearing is not a violation that's correct when wearing pants is not a violation would be uh, a phrase and would need uh, another sentence to follow it by wearing pants a person is not in violation eh, both of those are just wrong so the correct answer here this is where this is where the gerund is correct so if it is the noun is the noun doing the action wearing is you can get that one correct pretty quickly what I wanted to show is that having is almost always wrong all right here's another one I just stole it out of there I didn't even throw the sentence in and that is having been borrowing I mean this is just bad English it's you you can't even say it while you're reading it so if you see having just toss it out but having a gerund is doubly wrong so this one is just wrong the present is the present perfect is wrong here's one I'm going out on a limb I've been doing test prep now for 25 years I have never ever seen the word being as correct since we've introduced grammar in 2005 was it 2005 test day or 2006 uh, being when an when an answer choice has being in it it's just always wrong I've never seen it so this is some research I'll have to do uh, with uh, a tuna colada in my backyard when I read a bunch of tests yes I do sit around and read tests um, I should read them on my treadmill and get rid of Phil's chubby little belly all right the reflexive pronoun <laughs> what's that Taya? I, I, I actually do read tests on it on a treadmill I should get up and do it more often all right, I went through uh, the six practice tests that we have right now. David said it changed in 2005. Okay, so the SAT changed in 2005 and then changed again in 2016. It was 11 years, that's correct. So of those six practice tests, there is only two cases where there's the reflexive pronoun self. And that was this one here, word itself, and then the fav, fa, uh, famous Mary Harris Jones, Mother Jones article of she herself. There is no comma used with self. This is only used twice out of six practice tests. And out of the other 20 so tests that we have, I don't see it that often. But it's always wrong to have a comma with the reflexive. All right. What else do we have? We talked about this yesterday. One of my favorite always wrong is IT apostrophe S. When you see this one, this is absolutely one just to cross through. This is not a word in the English language. Pronouns do not use sky commas or apostrophes for possession. They use them for contractions. So in the English language, weirdly enough, we only use the possessive with our pronoun possessive without uh, apostrophe so it it apostrophe s stands for it is it is the singular pronoun contraction of it is its is the singular pronoun possessive it's singular so does the thing own it so it's color it is the color that belongs to it the one thing I want you to do with possessives, apostrophes, if you're not sure if it's plural or possessive or a contraction, is put the word belongs or possess. The, the, the microphone that belongs to Phil, Phil's microphone. 
Phil's in speaking into the microphone. Phil is speaking into the microphone. So with regular and proper nouns, we use the apostrophe for both the contraction and the possessive, but never for its. So here's a couple. The one they love to throw in then, then is, well, which we'll go over, is, is there, which is possessive, and there, which is a contraction of there are. They, they are. This is plural, where these are singular. Look, dude, that's always wrong. The correct answer here is it is. So if it is IT apostrophe S, simply replace it with it is. If it is ITS without the apostrophe, put in belong. Does the thing belong to it? And you'll notice here that they always throw in the contraction and the plural. The plural here isn't even possessive, so there's only one that's possessive besides the third person, one's, one's own being. Never seen anything. There, there, there. This is people's famous, they use this incorrectly on social media all the time. Ready? There. Position. Like here. Like here. Actually, that is good. It's there is one. like here. I like that. Is that how you remember that? Yeah, that's how I remember that. Oh, you know what? That uh, that actually goes with where. I wonder if that's a thing. Is that a thing, David? A tuna colada. <laughs> uh, where? Where? So there is the camera. Where is it? It's over there. It is in position. There is they are. Always split this one apart into they are. And then finally, theirs is a possession. Wow, I use that as a contraction. That's really weird. Their, T-H-E-I-R, is belongs to or is possessed by. What is the possession? Boy, that really looked bad. Let's skip over that. It's forever saved on YouTube. These slides are really good. All right. One of my favorite. I've never seen that, but that's a great way to remember it. I've never seen that either. David, David. Giving you props. Props to Teo, the producer. Okay, then with an E and then with an A. Then is time. Then is time. I'm not saying that a singular then is always wrong, but I read 12 tests and a singular then was wrong on all 12 tests. So when there's just a then, it's just always wrong because they want to compare it to a van. It's got to have to have something else. When it sits by itself, it's almost always wrong. Um, and then more than that, we, we have a tendency to with our tongue, then and then. This is a, con a comparison. This is more than that. This is a wrong answer. Be very, very careful with your thens and thans. All right, ready? Uh, what time is it? This is pretty good. The $20 Venmo challenge. Are you ready? So let me get my slip of paper out. I have five questions. We've got a warm up and five questions. If you beat David to the right answer, whoever gets the right answer on my comments first gets a $20 Venmo. Does everybody have Venmo? You all got Venmo? Anybody doesn't have Venmo? If you don't have Venmo, you get a <laughs> shot of rum, pineapple juice, one can of albacore tuna, a tuna colada. Oh my God, this is really degrading. Okay, ready? Here's the warm up. They likely would have ceased operating, however, if it hadn't been for Friedrich Klinsmann. I do have a question. Change. 
<laughs> I think you went mute. Did I go I, mute? I was muted. I had muted. Yo, he had muted me. Why Why am I mute? Am I muted? Not anymore. Lost audio. We were trying to figure out some rules. We were trying to figure out the rules of the game. Okay, here's the rules of the game. Ready? All is lost. David's lost already. So Phil's going to type in. 3R Prep's going to type in question number one. So ready for question number one. Klausman, the president of the San Francisco Federation of the Arts, and she was a fan of cable cars, was unconvinced. Here are your answer choices. We need like a TikTok. <laughs> okay, we are back. And the answer is... Do, 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 do. I'm not getting my chat on my phone. I was getting it yesterday. I'm the I'm the owner of the 20. I get to decide because the winner is Peyton Jones. The answer is D. And so this comma in coordinating conjunctions puts an independent clause in the middle of an independent clause. That is not correct. That would be the same here. Good job, Peyton, is that the and in the coordinating conjunction with the semicolon does the same function. So both A and B are incorrect. And C is a comma splice, which splices an independent clause in the middle of an independent clause it needs to have a dependent clause that does not have a subject to it. Um, uh, so it's a, or is that a phrase? Okay, so Peyton is number one. So does that mean that like $100 so, is going out today? No, no, that means whoever wins the... F I ain't send 100 bucks out, man. Then how are you giving $20 to each answer? Peyton, what? It's going to be twenty dollars for whoever wins all five. Okay, so the Peyton. the one who wins the most. So Peyton has number one. If there's a if there's a tie, we'll split it up. If it's a three way tie, you I'm get seven dollars. That's, that's what Tay was trying to figure out. Earlier. All right, that's why we mu muted the mic. Oh, oh, look at that. Typed in on that. Didn't want to do that. Let's get rid of that. Wow, that was weird. Let's go over here and say. Number two. I do have the ability to mute the mic every once in a while in case you think that the audio is gone. <laughs> it will come back. I just like to be able to talk without being heard. He was he was asking me questions on the game. So th uh, it, eight thirty prep might be. Phil is sweating, but he doesn't have my business of the next distance. So. All right, ready. Question number two. Two or three other customers would then harmonize higher or lower than the melody to create a song. Than, then, then, lowest, lower, low. Here are the answers. Go. Question number 17. Tick, tick, tick. I want to tick tock, tick tock. We'll do a slurp. Mug slurp. Dave, do you even know what test this is? Peyton says it's A. Rock on. Someone's getting 20 bucks. Peyton, the answer is A. David says A. Ben, dang it, Phil. Ben's like, eh. Hey, Ben, here's the really good thing. You are going to college in a year and a half. <laughs> I hope. Otherwise, will be riots in the streets. All right, now come in. Very good. All right, Peyton Kilt is killing it. Let's come over here and do number three. If she wins number three, she wins. That's <laughs> number three. Ready? Number three is easy. I shouldn't. I shouldn't have put such an easy number three on it. Ready? Little wonky PDF because it was stolen. Beyond honoring tradition, then semicolon a colon. Barbershops would be wary of adding instruments that might compromise 
Barber Shoppers. That's a barbershop quartet. And so the question is number 28. Tradition hyphen, tradition comma, tradition semicolon. Peyton, he will be out of here. That is true. <laughs> yeah, you said she. I oh, I she. Confused. Oh, oh, I am a boy. Peyton. I confused you. I have I have three Peytons that I'm tutoring right now. Sorry, Peyton. <laughs> ben Esser wins. Uh oh. Ben's coming on strong. The answer is H. Tradition here, then two commas. Because the colon, the dash, and the semicolon all have to go at the end of an independent clause. Beyond honoring tradition, then, is not an independent clause. This is an absolute great question to uh, check out and memorize because these three all have to go. A colon, a dash, a semicolon, a period all have to go at the end of a sentence. There was not a sentence. Ready? Question number four. We have a competition on our hands. Ben is coming on strong. So question four coming up here. Peyton, I'm a boy. Peyton, I am so sorry. We will have to edit out all of my comments to you. I was thinking of who, what, what, what Peyton, David, what Peyton do I have that's a girl? Question number four. Lou flags down a passerby who has an intriguing face offering to create a tiny silhouette portrait needing just a small piece of black paper, razor sharp scissors, and a few minutes. Question number 34. Dave, no answers. Oh, Dave's letting other people win. Is it Jay? You are the winner, Peyton Jones. Peyton gets the 20 bucks. Do you have a Venmo account? All right. <laughs> the last one's just for prize. All right. The last one is just for pride. And that is question number five. It appears to be the first known animal whose repertoire of sophisticated deception behavior enables it to imitate multiple animals. Question number 47. Yeah, I think Ben might have had that one. Oh, Ben had that one? Yeah, Ben had that one. So this should be the tiebreaker. Oh, it's the tiebreaker. Did Ben have that? Yeah, Ben had it. So. Two, it's two and two. Also, you've got that question thing on the board again. Uh oh. And Ben's coming in with the A. Is it A? Oh, David says C. Oh, David comes in with the correct answer, and it has to go to Peyton. So, Peyton, you are the first student with the C. It is whose. It is possessive. This is one I didn't go over, and that is the pronoun who. Pronouns do not have sky commas when they own something. The repertoire belongs to the animal. Who owns the repertoire? And that is the end of 8.30 prep for Thursday night. Peyton Jones, congratulations. Email me, fill at 3 prep. Let me put that on there. The winner is Peyton Jones. You are forever immortalized. No, I don't have Venmo. All right, uh, send me your email and we will arrange, uh, you got PayPal? <laughs> we'll arrange something, uh, a Starbucks gift card. Do you, what, what's, your, what's your favorite restaurant that's still open? <laughs> Chipotle. Chipotle, is Chipotle still open? Yeah. Woohoo! All right, very good. I will see you next week. We're going to be doing reading. We're going to have our other tutor, Will, come and join me Monday and Tuesday. 
We're going to talk about reading during the coronavirus with a librarian. And then I'm going to teach you reading techniques on the ACT. So next week is reading week uh, before we jump back into math rules in two weeks. And maybe, maybe some science. We'll do some science. And then we're going to do some essay writing. So there's a lot coming on on 830 Prep. I'll try to uh, post it on my uh, website, uh, 3R Prep. I'm Phil McCaffrey. Have a good weekend. Nice three-day weekend because uh, I'll be working. <laughs> At least I got something to do during the coronavirus. I'll see you then. Thank you.